Hey there, this is Jeff Hassan. And I really appreciate it, Hank, uh, that you asked me to talk to your students again. Uh, I will say a few things right off the bat. First off, as I've said every time I've appeared uh, in front of your classes, students, respectfully, you don't know how good you have it. There's nobody better, in my opinion, than Hank. Hank leads with his heart, has feelings and compassion for folks, and he's smart as heck. So I really hope you're taking advantage of all of the opportunities and all the learnings that you have with Hank. Uh, and I um, encourage you, uh, because I know you're going to have a long uh, standing relationship with him long after your class is over. I encourage you to really be a sponge like I am and learn learn what you can from, from Hank. Secondly, I want to apologize for the clothes that I'm wearing. I'm actually living in Seattle. I haven't taken fleece off in about three weeks. We've had 20 inches of snow. Normally, uh, I think we've had 20 inches of snow in my 19 years here. Uh, so we're, we're uh, kind of living like we're in the Midwest, uh, shoveling and, uh, and living in fleece. So let me uh, see if I can answer some of the questions that, uh, that Hank um, sent to me. Uh, I apologize if I take my eyes off the screen a couple times to look down and make sure. So the first one was, what will be the biggest challenges or changes in marketing communications in the next three years? I think this one, uh, I look at it from a tech perspective and a consumer perspective. I, I, I see more interfaces, more behaviors, more technologies. But also, uh, importantly, I see more expectations from consumers. And as I've said before, and I've written in, in a couple of books, uh, people like my mother-in-law, who's soon to be 90 years old, are among those who have these really big expectations. Uh, they expect things to work, uh, to be intuitive, and uh, this the true story that I, I tell often, my mother-in-law was playing Angry Birds on her iPhone, and she asked me how come she couldn't stop and uh, pick up the game in progress on her iPad, and, and I had to laugh because she was in her mid-80s at the time, but that's the expectations that we all have, and that's the uh, advice that I often give brands is to really grasp onto the concept of high expectations being raised even higher. Uh, the next thing, what excites me about marketing communications today, I think it's the uh, the, the change. Uh, uh, I, I When I interview folks, I, I ask them uh, what kind of role are they looking to be in. You know, there are some people who want to know exactly what they're going to do every day, uh, every week, every month. Um, the working world is hardly like that. I can't really mention a job that um, that fits that bill that I know about. So if you're looking for a job where you, um, it's like the train is going to hit the station every day at 11.02 in the morning and then leave at 11.04, that's really not the world of uh, the working world that we live in. And, and uh, you know, I, I look to embrace that rather than to, to be afraid of it. Third, what frustrates me or uh, annoys me about marketing communications? Simply the, uh, the idea that sometimes uh, folks are working from an old playbook. Uh, the world uh, of marketing, communications, and uh, technology uh, is moving so fast that it frustrates me to no end when people are um, using uh, old stats, using old case studies, using old personas, uh, when really the world is moving at a pace where you need to be um, vigilant about making sure that your information is current. Uh, what's the most important business lesson that I learned? Uh, I remember this one distinctly. The boss that I had, um, to this day, I consider my favorite boss and somebody I learned more from than anybody else. He bounced me out of his office one day and he said, uh, come back to me when you have a solution, because I had presented a problem to him. And even though I was senior at the time, uh, this was a lesson that I had not learned to that date. And, and it really, uh, the the world... Uh, frankly, is full of a lot of problem identifiers. And, and to be as uh, valuable as you can be to an organization, I think we need to become problem solvers. Uh, think back five years, did I envision the job that I have today? I've probably had three jobs in the last five years. Uh, I started out as a sports writer. I got into the agency world because I thought everybody could write. 
Uh, little did I know that wasn't the case. So I got into the agency world, uh, first in PR, then in marketing. But I've had five or six or seven, uh, honestly, different jobs. Uh, and I'm sure I'll have a few more before I'm done. Uh, how did, do I do, did I develop the skill of speaking? Um, so I've spoken, fortunately, over 200 times around the world. I don't pretend to be a master of it. Uh, Hank is awesome on stage. I don't know if you've seen any of his uh, his appearances uh, or his uh, his talks. They're awesome. the The advice I would give you is to practice. Uh, the best presentation that I've ever given what happened recently. Uh, I work at an agency called Possible. It was a presentation to the Bill and uh, Melinda Gates Foundation. And uh, for a variety of reasons, I, and including the fact that I didn't write this presentation, I was only asked to present it. I practiced it out loud, I'm not kidding, probably 30 times over the course of about a four day period. Now it got to the point where it became somewhat natural for me and I knew exactly where I was going, I knew what was coming next. Uh, and, and probably the best part of it is I was more confident about my content than I ever had been before. So I would suggest doing that. Uh, what would uh, I suggest you be doing to prepare for life after uh, USC? A uh, couple things. One, uh, network. Uh, and I know that you're doing that. Several of you have reached out to me on LinkedIn, follow me on Twitter. I appreciate that. And there's nothing like connections. And, and again, Hank is a master teacher when it comes to, to connections. And uh, as I'm sure you know, Hank is a giver, not a taker. So when, it, when you're networking, you want to give. Uh, and uh, it'll come back to you in spades. But what you want to do is make sure that you're not uh, out there with your hand out. The other thing I would suggest is to find your passion. Uh, that's a cliche, but there are some things that get you up uh, in the morning, uh, get you out of bed and get excited, and there are other things that you kind of um, really don't want to do. Um, I like writing. I like creating content, so I'm about to finish my third book. Uh, it has been a lot more work on this third one than I had remembered on, on the first two, but I'm passionate about content creation, and, uh, and it gets me out of bed and gets me working really early. Finally, one, uh, one final piece of advice, uh, I would say be humble. Uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll point to somebody who, I live in Seattle, uh, one of the smartest marketers I know in Seattle is somebody who I never want to work with again. Because one time, more than once actually, but I remember one time specifically, he uh, was in a meeting with us and he said, uh, started a sentence with, now here's a great idea. Now. With all due respect, I think it's up to the people in the room to determine if it is or if it isn't, rather than somebody uh, self-evaluating and telling you how smart he or she is. So I, I would say humble is something that's going to serve you both uh, in uh, the business world, but I think just in general. Uh, so I, I, Hank, uh, I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, I probably went long, which isn't, uh, isn't the first time. Uh, I really uh, encourage you to, uh, again, learn everything you can from this man and reach out to me if there's anything I could do to help. Thanks.